In this tutorial, we're going to be looking at layers. Layers are a really useful way that we can manage our 2D data. First, we're going to start with a slideshow so that we can discuss some of the key concepts and issues associated with layers, and then we'll go into the software to demonstrate how we can use them and control them in practice. So what are layers? Layers are a system to help you organize your 2D data when creating and designing in the software. So the things you can put, typically put on a layer are vectors, bitmaps or images, dimensions, and 3D component grayscales. And that's for Aspire and VCarve only. So what are the main uses for layers? Well, really, they're actually designed to make our life a lot easier. And so items on a layer can be hidden or undrawn in order for you to simplify the data within the projects that we're working with. Layers can also be assigned a colour just to really help us identify what vectors belong to which layers in order for us to be able to differentiate between the different vectors. You can also give the layer a name to identify it to help you organize your objects. And finally, toolpaths can be associated with a layer using the vector selector option to automate some machining tasks across similar parts. And there are a few tutorials that actually cover this process, which we'll link you to in the related videos section for this tutorial. So let's have a look at some facts all to do with layers. So an object can only be on one layer at any specific moment. You cannot have one object, for example, a vector that lies on two different layers. A single object can only exist on one single layer. And when you create a new object, it will automatically be placed on the current active layer, which is identified using the bold text within your layers list. Editing an object will not change its current layer unless the operation creates a new object, which is placed onto the active layer. For example, if we had a vector and that was on layer one, and we were currently on layer two, if we wanted to offset that vector that's on layer one, it will create that vector onto the active layer. And finally, 2D toolpath previews are not assigned to a layer, but the visibility can be toggled using the checkboxes next to each toolpath name within the toolpath tab. Okay, so how are layers created? So by default, when you start a job, you will automatically be working with what we call layer one. If you wanted to add in a new layer, you simply click on the add new layer button from within the layer managers. You can also right click on an item in your job and use the option to move or copy items to a new layer to create a new layer. When you import a bitmap, the software will automatically create a layer called bitmap layer in which that houses the bitmap that you just imported. When you import a vector file, for example, if you imported a DXF, DWG, or SKP file, which has layers saved in them, then the software will recreate those layers within the layer manager, so that they match up to the original item that it was created from. If you were to import a PDF, then it will create a separate layer for each page within the document. And then working with EPS or AI files, which does not have any layer information, the software will create a single layer with the same name as the imported file. And when working with certain operations within the software, for example, when you make use of the dimensions tool or the vector texture tool, the software will automatically create a layer if using one of these processes. 
And then when working with Pro Software or Aspire, there's various different functions that will also create layers. For example, when using the plate production, creating zero planes, and when slicing models, these will all create new layers also. So what's the best way to make use of the layers? Now really, there is no right or wrong way to use the layer management system. Really, this system is there to help you to utilize them so that they suit your application and the way that you like to keep your work organized. And this is really what it boils down to. It's a system in place for you to be able to organize all of your parts. Do you have to use layers? No, you don't. But even the simplest of projects will often benefit from using them. And the layers are used extensively throughout the video tutorials. So you can see the different ways that they can help stay organized and save time within your working projects. So let's go into the software to look at ways that we can access our layers. So let's go and create a new file. So here we're just going to work with a job that is 10 by 10 and then we'll go ahead and press OK. So you can access your layer manager from the view toolbar at the top and from the layers tab over here. Let's first take a look at the view toolbar. So here we can see we have layer one. So this is our default layer. And if we click on that, that will drop down our layer manager and we're able to see what's in our layer management system. So currently we just have one layer. The software will always default your layer to layer one. You can see the visibility of the layer. The light bulb is switched on. So we can know that that layer is currently switched on. Here we can see that the layer color is black and we can use this option to alter the color. The page is a blank page so that's telling us there is currently nothing on this layer at the moment. Then we can see it says layer one, so that's the name. And then if we click on this icon over here, you can see we have a menu giving us various options to further control or organize the different layers. Another way for you to access your layer manager is by going over to the design side of the software in the left hand side and clicking on the layers tab and that will open up your layers list. So here it's, it's very similar to what you saw earlier from the view toolbar, except we have a few extra things that we can do. For example, if we take a look at these arrows, we have an arrow pointing upwards and we have an arrow pointing downwards. And these arrows enable us to adjust the order of our layers within our layers list. We can also look at separating this layers tab from uh, the design side of the software so that it's always in view. To do that, we simply take the layers tab and we just drag that out to wherever we would like to position that. And with the pin in this position, it just means it's pinned to that point and it will always stay there. So you can go ahead, create shapes or do whatever it is you'd like to do within your drawing tab, but still have visibility of your layers list elsewhere in the program. If you wanted just to temporarily hide this, you can simply unpin that, continue with your work, and you'll see that the layers list just undraws itself until you hover over it, and then that layers list expands again. To pop that back into your design side of the software, you just simply take that and then drag it over into view like so. And then you can also look at moving the order of these tabs by just dragging them up and down. Another way to access your layers list is by pressing Control L on the keyboard and that will automatically open up your layers list. So let's have a look at some of the ways that we can change and manipulate our layers. So first off, if I click on layer one, you'll see that the text is highlighted and it's highlighted, which means that I'm able to actually change the name of that layer. For example, I can call this one new layer. And then I can just click 
in this blue space and that will accept that new name and you can see the layer name has changed. I can also right click on the layer and I can say rename layer in order for us to rename that. So I could change the name of that one to border and then again I can click in the blue space and that will accept that and then another way to alter the name here is by clicking on this icon here and again I can use the rename option where I could rename that one to border vectors as we're about to create some geometry on this particular layer and again, similar to what I showed you from the view toolbar layer manager, we have the layer visibility indicated by this light bulb. And if we click on that, it switches the visibility of that layer off. And if we click that on, so it's a lit up, it's telling us that that layer is visible. If we were to create any vectors now, they would be black as indicated by this black color swatch here. Currently, we have no vectors on our layer. We haven't created anything yet to go onto this layer or have imported anything to go onto this layer. And that's why we're seeing a blank page here. So let's go into the drawing tab and we can start to think about drawing up some vectors to help further demonstrate some of the layer options. So let's start by drawing a square. So we're going to go and into the draw rectangle tool. I'm going to go with a width of eight, height of eight, and then we're just going to pop that into position like so, close out, and you can see I have a vector here. Now, if we go to our layers tab, you'll also notice now that I have data on what was once a blank page where we had no data on there. Now that we have a vector on this layer, we can see that's indicated by the shapes on the page. The software is telling us we have data on this layer. To hide the visibility of this layer, again, we just click on the light bulb and that will just... Um, hide everything that we have on that layer. You'll also notice that when we have layers that are switched off, you can see that we have the warning from the software that we are currently working with the active layer, the only an active layer. So an active layer is indicated by text in bold. So you can see our border vectors layer is actually in a bold font and the software is telling us this is the active layer and it's red to warn us that it's currently not switched on. But if we make anything now, if we create any vectors, it will automatically switch on our border vectors layer because we need a layer to put data onto. And it's a good indication of when you're particularly when you're working with lots of different layers, you may have some layers switched off. It's just a good warning for you to know that if you're about to create a vector and you can see that your layer is in red, it's going to be added to this layer because it's currently the active layer. For example, if we go into the drawing tab and then we go ahead and we draw a circle and then if we go and just draw a circle over here, the moment that I let go you'll see now that my border vectors layer has now been switched on. I can see the square that we created for that layer. If we close out and go to our layers bar, we can see it's now the visibility of that layer is now switched on because the software needed a layer for our circle to jump onto. And as we only had one layer in our job, it's the only active layer the software's going to default to switching on the layer so that we can see that circle. And of course, we then see the other data that is available on that layer as well. So let's just take that circle and we'll just press delete on the keyboard to delete that. And let's have a look at how we can create a new layer. Okay, so we can come over here and as I mentioned before, we can right click to activate all of these different options whereby we can say 
insert a new layer. We can also just left click on this icon here to insert a new layer and that will create a new layer above our current border vectors layer. So we'll go ahead and do that. So we'll insert a new layer. So here you can see the text is highlighted as layer one. So we're able to alter this text. So let's just call this one star and then we'll just click out here and you'll see that that's been accepted. You'll also notice that the star layer is now the active layer because that layer is bold. To make a layer an active layer, just simply click on the layer and you'll see that it will make the text bold and it just ensures that we know which layer is currently the active layer that we are currently looking at or what would manipulate to add in different uh, data, whether that's vectors, grayscales, that sort of thing. So let's just go and make the star the active layer. You can also see we have nothing on this layer, hence why we're seeing a blank page there. So let's go into the drawing tab and then we'll go over and we'll draw in a star. So creating a five point star, we'll go ahead and press create and close. And we'll just take that and we'll just center that to our job using the F9 key. So now that we've created the star, we've created that on the active layer, which we know is the star layer. So if we go to our layers tab, we can see now that we've displayed data on the layer for the star. And we can also see that displayed here in the view toolbar. So now I have the ability to switch off the visibility so I can't, can no longer see the star vector that's on the star layer. And then I can switch it back on just to bring that into our visibility. There are various ways for us to tell which layer vectors belong to. For example, from the within the layers list, I can double click on the page and it will highlight the vector or vectors that are on that particular layer. So if you go to the border vectors and double click on this page, you'll see that the square is now highlighted. Another way to figure this out when you're not in the layers list is by simply clicking on a vector and then over here in the lower right hand corner you can see we've got the layer that this vector belongs to represented by the L so we can see that that's on this star layer and then if I go ahead and click onto the square you'll see that the layer information has been updated here to tell us that that square belongs on the border vectors layer. To help us differentiate vectors and layers, we can make use of the layer colors. So over in the layers tab, you'll see that currently our star and border vectors have layers that are set to a black swatch. And that's represented by this black square or rectangle that you can see in each one of those layers. And so any vectors on these layers will be black as we can see over here in the 2D view. If we wanted to change that, for example, if we wanted to change the color of the star layer, we could simply go over to the star layer, click on the arrow that represents the color swatch and you'll see all of these colors here. And if these colors aren't enough, then you can go and select from more colors using this option here. But let's say we wanted to turn this layer gold, we could click on the gold option. Here you can see that that swatch is updated in the layers list. It's also updated here in our smaller layers list within the view toolbar. And we can see in the 2D view that our star vector is now gold. And any new vectors that I create on this layer will also be of that color. For example, if we just go ahead to the drawing tab and then we'll go ahead and we'll look at drawing a circle. So here we'll just draw a circle, press create, close out. We can see the color of that circle is gold and that's because we've drew this circle on the star layer, which is the current active layer, which we can see as it's represented by the bold text. 
Then we can look at taking that vector and we can look at moving that or copying that to a different layer. So let's have a look at how we can do that. So with that vector selected, we can right click and you'll see we have two options at the bottom. We have copy to layer, or we can copy that to the borders vector or to a new layer. Or we can move that to a layer. So that will just move it from the star layer to a different layer. So let's do that. So we'll go ahead and we'll just move that. So we're going to move that to a new layer. So you press new layer and you'll see add new layer dialog box has popped up here where it's prompting us to change the name. So for example, I could just change the name of this to circle here. And we can also look at changing the color. So let's change that color to blue. We can make the layer visible or invisible. We'll make this one visible so that we can see that once we OK that. We're also going to make this the active layer. And so this one, once we press OK, the circle layer will be added into our layers list. It will be bold. It will be the active layer. And any new vectors that we create will be created on that layer because it's the active layer. So we'll go ahead and press OK. Click in the white view here and you can see that circle is blue. You can see we are currently on the circle layer as that is the active layer. It's bold because we selected that option using that small dialog box. So there we've just demonstrated how creating any new objects will go onto the current active layer. However, when you're creating copies or you are working with layout type functions such as linear and circular array options, all of the new copies will actually be created on the existing original layer, not the active layer. So let's have a look at this. So if we go to our layers tab, you can see currently our star layer is the active layer. It's bold here. We can also see that by looking at the view toolbar at the top here. Now, if I was to take this circle, which we know is on a different layer to the star, it's on the circles layer, because if I select it, you can see it's a circle down there. And if I take that, put it into transform mode by clicking on that again, and then press control and just move that out and click out, you'll see it's blue because we've just took a direct copy from the circle that is on the circle layer. Okay, so that's that, if we just delete that, and the same applies for um, circular and linear arrays as well. So if you go into the circular array copy and then go ahead and press copy, even though we're on the star layer as the active layer, if we close out and just click in, we can see that's created all of those uh, copies onto the circle layer. So just control Z just to delete or just to undo that process there. Now there is an exception and that's when we create offsets. So for example, I have this vector here, which is on the circle layer. Um, and we are currently on the active layer, which is the star layer. And if we go to offset, we can offset this outwards, let's say by quarter of an inch and then go ahead and press offset, close out. And if we click out here, we can see that the newly created offset vector has been created on the star layer because that is the current, the active layer. So let's just go back to the circle, the blue one. We're going to select it, select it again to put it into transform mode and then just press control just to create a copy. And again, because we've took a direct copy, it creates that copy onto the original uh, layer that that vector uh, sits on. So now what we're going to do is we're going to look at um, how we can group and ungroup objects and how that works with multiple vectors on multiple layers. So what we're going to do is we're going to box select these three circles. So when you box select from the lower right to the upper left, any part of a vector that it touches, it will be as part of that selection. And then what we can do now that they're all selected, we can right click and we can use this option to group objects. And if I just click out now, 
you can see that they are all now belonging on the star layer and that's because that is the active layer so when you take vectors that are on other layers that on, are not on the currently active layer and you group them they'll be grouped to the current active layer just like we can see here we can see that because all of the vectors are now gold so now let's have a look at what happens when we ungroup those vectors so if we click on that so now that they're all grouped i can just select anywhere and it will select that entire group entity and then we can right click and then we have the option here to ungroup objects well we have two options we have ungroup back onto original object layers or we have ungroup onto groups layer so ungroup onto groups layer is the star layer it's the current active layer where this group belongs to right now so if we ungrouped that all of those vectors would remain on the star layer but if we use this option here to ungroup back onto the original object layers it's just going to remember where those vectors are, were originally from before they were grouped and it will just ungroup them back onto their original layers so if we click on that and then click out here you can see now that these two circles are blue and this one still remains gold as it's part of the star layer so now let's have a look at how to delete layers and what we do with the information that's currently on those layers so over in your layers tab let's say we wanted to take the circle and we can right click and we can use this option to delete okay we can look at deleting this layer and we'll just go ahead and say yep yeah, we want to delete this layer a pop-up will come up to tell us that this layer actually contains data which we know that these two circles we can see that they're actually highlighted here and it's asking us what we want to do with this data do we want to move that data to a different layer and if so which layer do we want to move it to we can simply select a layer to move that to or we could simply say no i want you to delete the the data as well as deleting that layer and then if you go ahead and press OK, you'll see now that we have uh, just two layers and that circle layer has now been deleted. So now let's have a look at some more options that we've got within our layers list. To help us demonstrate some options, we're just going to create a new layer. So we're just going to right click on the border vectors layer and then just say insert a new layer. And this one, we're just going to leave that one named as layer one. Okay, now in, the, and we can see it's the active layer as well. Now in the drawing tab, if we go ahead and draw another star, the same size, close out, and then we just want to position that so it's in front or on top of our existing star. And if we click out, you'll see now that uh, we no longer can see the gold star. And that is because our current layer, if we go to our layers list, layer one is sat below the star layer and so any vectors that are on this layer will actually take prominence in the 2D view. To alter that we could simply say to the star layer I want to move that down below layer 1 which we could use this arrow here and if I do that and then click here in the 2D view you can see that the position has now changed and now the star layer vector where, where the star is it, actually plays prominence um, over layer one because it's sat underneath it and again if we move that back up you'll see now that the black star that is on layer one is now in view so that's just by using the arrow keys just to or reorder the position of your layers and how we see them in the 2d view so let's have a look at some further options that we have we know that when we click on a layer and when the text turns bold, it means we're in the active layer. We can also alter that using the icons on the right hand side of each one of those layers. So if I click on this one for the star layer and use the option to activate, it will make that the active layer. You also have various show options. So you could show this if this was invisible. You could show only this. And if I click on that, that will just make the other layers invisible, 
where it's just showing only this as we specified. You could show all but this, so it will switch that off and turn on the visibility of the other layers that we have. Then we could have show all, which will show all of those layers. We have other options to hide, so it'll hide this, so it'll just switch off the visibility, uh, and then you can hide all, like so, and then we can switch on all of those layers by clicking on this light bulb here. Okay, then we have the option to lock a layer, so we could lock the star layer, and that just means that I'm not able to uh, touch anything on that layer. For example, this circle, I'm not able to select it, I can't do anything to it, and it's really useful when you're working with a lot of data with lots of different layers. And so to unlock that, you just use the unlock option. So then we could look at inserting a new layer so we could use the option to insert a new layer we could give it a name if we wanted to we'll just insert a few here so we've got three empty layers and then what we can do is we could look at deleting a layer so you can delete this layer you can also look at deleting various other options visible layers invisible layers and empty layers so let's say we wanted to delete all empty layers so we could delete all of the empty layers and it will delete them for us like so. We have the option from this drop down to rename a layer. So you can rename a layer by using that option to enter in the text there. Alternatively, you could just select the layer and click on that again to bring up the highlighted text in order for you to change that layer's name. We have the option to select the layer vectors on a particular layer so we can do that and that will highlight the vectors on a particular layer so again select layer vectors like so and again as demonstrated earlier we could also look at just selecting the actual layer itself and double clicking on the page to display the vectors that are on that particular layer. Then we have the option here to merge visible and by merging the visible option you can then merge all of the vectors on all of the visible layers to one layer. So if we did that you can see we just have one layer here and all of the vectors are on there and you could go ahead and change the name if you wanted to. So that completes this guide on layer management. And you'll see how we use layers and manage them throughout many of the tutorials that are available with your software.